Hey everybody, Steven here, and today a quick video showing how you actually enable HDR if you actually have a monitor that is capable of it. So obviously the first thing you're going to need is a monitor that has HDR. This monitor right here is the Scepter C345B QUN168. This is a 34 inch ultra wide monitor that has HDR 600 and 1000, and this is actually certified by VESA. So the big thing here is if you can find an HDR monitor, obviously that is important, but if it is certified by VESA, I personally just think it's going to be a little bit better because it's gone through a certification process, meaning that they've actually tested to make sure that the peak brightness, whatever the nits are, is actually the one that you're going to get with whatever HDR that the monitor, the company is claiming that it has. In this instance, this actually is certified for HDR 1000, meaning that the peak brightness will reach that 1000 nits. It's also certified obviously for HDR 600 with this as well. I like the fact that this has the two options. That is really, really good. You can go down the road of the kind of differences that you're gonna find with HDR after that. Does it have local dimming, full array local dimming, right, with this? Um, how many dimming zones does it have, right? With this one, I believe it's 16. So you can get into the weeds a little bit with HDR, and obviously if you have a high-end monitor, like some of them it's like 512, or maybe they are even individually lit for the actual lights themselves, that's going to create a really good HDR experience, but those are like $3,000 monitors, where this one right here isn't going to be that expensive. I'll have a link for my unboxing video and my review, which I'm currently working on. This is my favorite ultra-wide monitor to date, by the way. This thing is phenomenal. And one of the draws for me is the HDR and the fact that it has the 600 and the 1000 here. So in order to actually enable this though, obviously make, make sure that you have a monitor that has it. Most of the time you're going to enable it first in the actual panel settings. Now I did just review an MSI monitor, the optics version, and it's a 32 inch monitor. That wasn't the case. So even though I say that you may have some out there where that isn't the case, you actually just turned it on in your window settings, but most panels, you will actually enable it. In order to do that, you're gonna to go to the settings here and you're gonna to go to system, typically. It's gonna be somewhere, but typically I find it in the actual system settings. And then once I scroll down, it just says HDR right here. I'll click it. And then after that, I have two different modes that I can choose the 600 or the 1000. If it just has HDR, for instance, 400, you would just turn HDR on. It may say HDR 400, or it may just say HDR. This one, I get to choose between the 600 or the 1000, right? So it's either peak brightness of 600 nits or peak brightness of 1000 nits. So this is gonna be HDR 1000. Now that's just enabling it in the actual panel settings here. After that, I've found this to be a mixed bag. Sometimes I don't need to enable this in Windows. Sometimes I can just go into a video game and then I can turn it on. Some video games, I can turn it on in the game and then I don't actually have to necessarily mess with anything in the panel. I think the proper way to do it would be to enable it in the panel and then you're going to either enable it in the game or in Windows. Typically I go panel settings, then I go to Windows, and then I go into my game, but what I found is certain games, Doom Eternal for instance, I can just enable it in the panel and then I can go into the game, it pops up, and then I can actually just adjust the HDR settings in the game and it's good to go. But to kind of run through the different lines that I personally go through, I'm gonna go from the panel, enable HDR, and then after that we're gonna go into Windows. You're gonna go to your settings. So let's go to overall settings. You're gonna go to system, and display, which is usually the first thing that pops up. From here, there's a little tab. It says use HDR and you simply click on that and that has been enabled now for Windows. What you're gonna notice is after you do that, it may seem that like the monitor is more dim because it has a greater range for peak brightness. So you may have to go through your panel settings uh, or your NVIDIA control panel or your AMD control panel and actually tweak these settings now. Now, some settings like this, once I enable HDR, in terms of being able to adjust my picture settings in the panel, they're not there anymore. 
This is why I say some I've seen that it still allows you to do that. Most of the time, that's not going to be the case. So what you end up needing to do if it looks too dim is that you're going to go to either your NVIDIA control panel or you're going to go into your AMD control panel. And then we're going to adjust uh, the desktop color settings. And from here, now I can actually increase the brightness. You can probably see that gets really bright or really dim. I have a greater spectrum now with this in terms of the amount of brightness that I can get with this. And so usually I'm, yeah, I'm then changing these settings. And I don't want things to be too washed out. So I'm using my reference images here. You have three of them to make sure that this looks good, right? And obviously you can oversaturate this pretty quick if you have these high nits. Let's just apply this. I would spend a lot more time than that with this. And then this is good to go. And now we can check too. Now everything looks really vibrant and the colors look good, but I would say this probably looks a little too bright for me. So I may change this and actually turn this down just a little bit because of that. And then this is going to be the balancing act of trying to find based off your reference images and what video games you're playing and things like that, what looks good with this where it doesn't look washed out. That's gonna take some time, right? You're gonna actually have to spend some time tweaking those settings if you're gonna leave it on. Typically what I do, I don't actually leave it on all the time, but this is actually one of the first monitors where it feels like I could. Most of the time, it's just not worth it because the nits aren't bright enough. It doesn't look that great, even if I adjust the settings compared to when it's turned off. So I turn it on in my panel settings, I turn it on in Windows, and then I go to my game if I need to go down that route, or I just turn it on, I go to my game, I can utilize it, and then when I'm done, I turn it off. Just because if I boot up another game, sometimes I've run into the issue where it's still trying to display it and it just doesn't look good. Sometimes that's not the case. It's not actually going to mess with that. But now you have kind of some options. What I've found over time is every game is gonna go about it different. Every panel is gonna go about it a little bit different, whether you're running uh, different applications. There are just things that pop up where it's like, oh, that doesn't look really good for whatever reason. And then you remember, oh, I have HDR on still. You turn it off and it goes back to looking good. So hopefully this helps with trying to set up HDR for your monitor. If you have any questions, definitely let me know in the comment section. But again, enable it in the panel settings. If you don't need it for the game, and you can always check, you could boot up a game and see like, oh, HDR is now available, I'll just do that. Or it may still not be, essentially it wouldn't pop out so you couldn't click on it in the game settings. And so you need to exit, you need to actually enable it in Windows and then go back to the game in order to utilize it. So hopefully this helps with actually dealing with that. If, like I said, you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below and I will answer those for you there. If you like the video, hit the like button for me. If you want to continue to follow along with all my content, hit the subscribe button for me. And as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.